I grew up in a musical family, and we used to live in remote Aboriginal communities in the top end of Australia, in Arnhem Land. People up there gave me the name Darata, which means in the Yongu language, spangled drongo. <laughs> it's a type of bird, not to be confused with the flame and galah. It has all kinds of eccentric behaviour, but it's well known for mimicking the sounds that it hears and weaving them into its songs. People up there sung a lot of songs, and I'd often fall asleep at night to the sounds of lawmen singing ceremonial songs across the road. I later learned that these kinds of songs, songs written with a purpose, are some of the most powerful tools for learning, remembering, and sharing knowledge. Anyone can write a song. I'm not talking about the greatest hits of all time or a top 40 banger, but you don't have to be a musician to use music as a memory tool. One of the first songs I'm sure a lot of you remember learning as a kid went like this. Yeah? Now, admittedly, as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, it didn't teach me much in the way of advanced astronomy. But when someone came along and went like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, gave the song a whole new meaning and gave me the building blocks for learning the English language. When we're kids, we're taught these simple little songs to help us learn pretty complex things. But for some reason, a lot of us seem to leave it there. Music hasn't always been this spectator circus that we've made it into today. See, traditionally, songs have been used as collective memory tools to help us learn information and pass it down over generations. Just think about the work songs, or the sea shanties. West African drum songs would travel for huge distances in pretty short amounts of time. And the first people of this country used song lines that are literally embedded in the land to sustain some of the oldest and most resilient continuing culture on Earth. When I left the bush and moved to the city as a young adult, I started making a pretty modest living as a folk rock musician, which was heaps of fun. But I soon started to question the deeper meaning behind the hedonistic nature of just making people dance and have a good time. Well, I guess I was looking for something a bit meaningful. And at the same time, I was looking around the world at the increasing chaos around me and wondering about the relevance of musicians in a future of growing global uncertainty. And around that time, I also came across something called permaculture, which is the idea that by mimicking natural systems, we can start to build more resilient human culture. And I thought this sounded like a much more practical thing to do with life than being a ragamuffin musician, so I actually decided to put it aside for a while. But before I did, I took the skills I had to the streets and busked my way into an eight-month permaculture course with the hope of learning how to grow my own vegetables and make compost and become self-sufficient. But far from self-sufficiency, it was actually about community and connection. The permaculture is this set of practical design principles inspired by indigenous knowledge based on the ethics of earth care, people care and fair share. It, it looks at patterns found in nature to inspire the design of more resilient food production systems, natural building, and even social structures. Even though I'd put music aside to pursue something more practical, ironically, it was a song that helped me to remember my first principle after a friend convinced me to do a class presentation on my beat-up old ukulele here. It went like this. There's no such thing as waste. <laughs> Only stuff in the wrong place. Yeah, you get the picture. But the thing is, it did the trick. And not only did I remember the principle to produce no waste, but my classmates constantly informed me that instead of earthworms, I should go into the field of earworms. <laughs> but it was the first time I really got a sense that music could be a powerful learning tool. Because like most things found in nature, music is made up of different patterns like rhythm and melody, that our brains find way easier to remember than just raw text or data. 
you just think about all those annoying TV jingles that you heard growing up that you can still remember today, imagine if they were actually written to teach us something useful. <laughs> if I try and get you to memorize this long and drawn out sentence, chances are it's not going to happen in a hurry. But if I sing something along the lines of, we can rely on patterns and you can learn them faster. Train your brain to retain them. Become a pattern master. Kind of gets us to the same place in the end. <laughs> Admittedly, in a slightly sillier and more ridiculous way, but that's precisely what makes it more memorable. Songs have been used for a long time to help us learn information, understand it, and then translate it into patterns that have our knowledge and ideas stored within them. This idea of permaculture was probably the single most useful idea or set of ideas I'd ever come across, and I really felt the urge to make it more memorable and accessible. So instead of pursuing a career in farming or gardening, I did the most logical thing for a gypsy ukulele player to do and formed a band. <laughs> we wrote one album based on each of the 12 principles of permaculture, and another one later for kids to get them into the idea, and took off for about six years, effectively teaching permaculture through song at schools, festivals, and electronic dance parties all over the world. <laughs> Which, again, was heaps of fun. And this time, you know, it was a bit of an experiment. I wasn't quite sure how it would be received and how effective it would be, but by far some of the best feedback I ever received was from a teacher back in Arnhem Land, where I was born, who told me that she'd integrated the songs into her class curriculum and inspired the kids to create an edible school garden and a blog about growing their own food. It was just the most inspiring thing to see these simple little songs fulfilling their original intention as learning tools to inspire permaculture design. So music makes us feel good and it connects us. And I think it also has a much more powerful potential to connect us as a community, educate us, and even feed us. So let's give it a little go, shall we? I'm going to ask you to indulge me for a second. If I can have you sing in your biggest TED voices. Kimchi, Kimchi. it's good for me. One more time. Kimchi, Kimchi. So, good so good for me. Oh, you're good. Well, all I do is I get my daikon radish with the cabbage finely diced. Then I chop a bit of chili with the garlic and the ginger to crank it up with spice. Then I add saltiness, sweetly caress it to give it a good massage. Then when I see that water rise, I stuff it inside a jar. Can everybody say stuff it? <laughs> stuff it. <laughs> stuff it inside a jar. One more time. I said stuff it. <laughs> stuff it. Stuff it inside a jar, and that's how you make kimchi! <laughs> See, something as ridiculous as singing a song about stuffing cabbage in a jar <laughs> helps me to remember the recipe to delicious kimchi. But a song can help you to remember anything you like, from your shopping list to your medical textbooks. Music can be so much more than just entertainment. And it doesn't even matter whether you play an instrument or not. Songs have the capacity to help us rebuild our collective cultural memory. And these days we have so much information at our fingertips, but we spend a lot of time uploading our memory to the cloud. But something as simple as a little silly song can help us to memorize anything we like and at the same time inspire the kind of interaction and collaboration that you don't necessarily get from looking at a screen. Music makes us feel good and taps into our emotions, and it also puts us in touch with something greater than ourselves. I feel like by bringing back the simple practice of writing songs with a purpose, we'll not only have a more pleasurable way to remember things, but we can also make an important step towards rebuilding a more connected, resilient and permanent culture.
So we're going to put this into practice right now, and uh, I'd like to invite to stage Schmicky, my dad Kevin, and my yuka of Formidable Vegetable. Please make them feel welcome. Thanks for having us on this Noongar Wajak Budja. This is a song about soil. You came. We've been looking up, we've been messing around, we've been freaking out, but it's time to get down, 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 cause we're made up of common ground, can't live without it, and it's time to get down, 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 down. Now when you flirt with the dirt, you'll observe it's certainly not inert From a one to a chicken You're never alone on the loam And it's time to get to work We've been looking up We've been messing around We've been freaking out But it's time to get down, down, down Cause we've made up of common ground Can't live without it And it's time to get down But it's time to get down, down, down Cause we're made up of common ground Can't live without it It's time we just go Yeah, let me hear you say down, 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 down One more time now Down, 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 down Cause you are what you eat And you are what what you eat eats and you're even what, what, what you eat, eats, eats And it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, it repeats Down, down, down Thank you very much! Cheers! <laughs>